All right. I always like to start with something interesting. And if you can't get a reliable cell phone signal in your home, okay, this is going to make your blood boil. Listen to this. Or maybe make it freeze. Because 4G LTE is actually headed to the moon. I don't know if you heard about this. That's right. No lunar losers here in our near future because you're going to have your TikTok, your Snapchat, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram accounts 24-7. Because NASA is now funding a plan to provide cellular service on the moon. I kid you not. What? How much is going to cost? About $15 million wow. just to set up cellular syllabus on the moon. I mean, I'll tell you, that's good, but the roaming chargers are going to be totally out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, to Tech Refresh. This is your weekly podcast that's distributed via Kim Commando today. So Monday through Friday, you have a different podcast. Or pardon me, Monday through Thursday, you have a different podcast. And on Friday, we have Tech Refresh because we like to have some fun and let you meet and talk to all of us here at the Kim Commando Show. And joining us, as always, we have our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. Allie, you're so smart. What are you going to bestow upon us today? We are going to talk about some of the hottest new tech out now and rumors about what's coming soon. Plus, my go-to method for searching for, we'll say, embarrassing things on my phone. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You know, you're probably like the only person who admits, like, yeah, I sometimes type things in. Like, I saw, my, my mom and dad saw it. It would be like... <laughs> Oh, geez. No, we I'm all do so it. Of course. We all so do sorry. It. And then we have our magnificent millennial and our very own internet scout, Matthew Heffel. What are you going to share with us today? Hackers are selling verified Twitter and Instagram accounts on the dark web, as well as my weight loss journey through tech and some crazy things that happened when I recently went to Disneyland. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. that's some good stuff. All right, we always like to start with the news. These are important tech developments to keep you in the know. And I'm going to go first, and we're going to talk about TikTok. Okay, TikTok is huge. The monthly active users, I looked this up, they have officially 1 billion monthly active users. Wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. That's, I mean, we would just take, like, how many at commando.com? <laughs> like, like, a half a billion? Yeah. A half a billion would be great. That'd be nice. That would be really great. Uh, for reference, Facebook is 2.9 billion. YouTube is 2.2 billion. Instagram, 1.4 billion. And then comes TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, and Twitter. You know, Twitter, compared to everything else, is actually pretty small. Mm. Uh, 390 million. Wow. Oh, that's surprising. I thought it was a lot bigger than that. All right. So the reason why I bring that up is TikTok has announced that they are going to be having an adults only option for live broadcasts. That's right. They say that these live streams are really for comedians who really mm. can't tell their jokes to maybe people under the age of 16 or 18. Uh, and they say that they're going to actually try to monitor this and um, Take a look at the algorithms. And it's going to be hard, though, because live stream means that the footage is probably not going to be reviewed right away by TikTok's algorithms for monitoring, for example. So here's the deal. Currently, if you're 16 or over, you can host a live stream on TikTok, although any user can tune in to watch these live streams. Uh, the age limit is going to increase to 18 next month, and the creators will have the option to limit the audience's age to 18 plus. So what do you think they're going to be live streaming? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's the internet. Uh, they say <laughs> that uh, TikTok is now going to be turning into OnlyFans. Eesh. And more than 170 million people use OnlyFans. Uh, OnlyFans has paid more than $2 billion to its creators. The top OnlyFans creators earn about $100,000 a month on average. Whoa. A month? A month? A month. You know, Ian has a friend that all she does is post bikini shots. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's hot. And he was telling me she's making like a couple of hundred thousand dollars a month just with what? bikini shots. I got to so go I'm to thinking, the gym. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to be going to the gym too. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know, I tried, I tell you this, I tried OnlyFans for just a little bit. But I'll tell you, my house was so hot, I ended up just turning on the AC. <laughs> <laughs> just that. All right. So, Matt, we're going to move from TikTok and OnlyFans to Twitter and Instagram. Is that right? Yeah. Hackers are using an age-old phishing scam to trick verified Instagram and Twitter accounts out of their accounts. These are the accounts that have a little blue check mark. And I thought before I got into this story, I'd explain exactly what that is. So a verified Twitter or Instagram account is some user or person that has a lot of followers, has a lot of people following them on the platform. And what Twitter or Instagram will do is they send them an email, verify 
either person, and then they're able to get that little blue check mark next to their name, which allows the people that follow them to kind of be sure that it's them that's posting on the account, or maybe their okay. PR team well, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you something about that little blue check mark. <laughs> okay. I have tried for years to yeah. tell Twitter I am a real person. And we even had a PR person reached out to us because they said, hey, listen, you know, we noticed like, you know, you don't really write about Twitter very much. And then I wrote it back. I said, you know, I would if I had the blue check mark. <laughs> hey, okay. Twitter, and if you're listening. Like, oh, <laughs> let me work on that. And then, Allie, you worked on it too, right? Ghosted. Mm. Absolutely totally. ghosted. Mm. Yeah, it's right. ridiculous. So if you, if anybody's listening and you have any pull at Twitter, Elon Musk, um, <laughs> be sure to let us know how we can get that blue check mark. Right. Basically what the blue check mark does is those people can be like, oh, I'm sure, like, for example, I like this example. If you're following Al Roker, the weatherman on Twitter, and he has a little blue check mark nobody. next to his name, yeah, then you know it's him posting on that account. It's not just some fake account that someone created that's called Al Roker but is not actually him, right? Well, scammers know this and they're using this to their advantage. Basically what they're doing is they're sending an email to the owner of that account saying, hey, your account's been hacked. Quickly click this link and put in your information and we'll get it back up. Well, of course, it's not real. It's a scam. And so once they put their information in, then the scammers steal that account and go and sell it on the dark web for anybody to buy. Now this has come back in the news lately because now they're being used for, of course, NFT scams. So you'll see a news correspondent from a local news station posting about how they're about to release their biggest NFT of all time. And then you click the link and then people put in their information like, oh, why is this person doing an NFT? And they buy it and then you don't get an NFT or you get a fake one that's not real. So a lot of these people are getting scammed that way. If you are on Twitter or Instagram and you follow people that have that little blue check mark and all of a sudden they start posting something that doesn't seem like them, Hmm. Don't Ooh. click the link or don't put <laughs> yes. in your personal information or especially your credit card information. Just Gosh. don't do that. <laughs> and if you know anybody who's susceptible, make sure you tell them this yeah, too. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know, our old phrase, stop and think. Yep. Don't click that link. Okay, that's really <laughs> important. All right, Allie, you're up next. Some new products. I'm taking a little break from Bad News Alley. Hey. I was thinking, let's talk about some hot new tech. Wouldn't that be fun? All right. I think we can all say confidently at this point, 2022, the year of the same old iPhone. Um, but maybe in 2024, we will get something different. Latest Apple rumor would be actually a really big game changer. An iPad with a foldable screen. Ooh. Wouldn't that be cool? Bum, 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 bum. Uh, so there's a company called C CCS Insights. They do this annual report where they try to predict what Apple's going to do next. They're really respected. They always put out this report. They say since foldable phones are so hard to execute, I mean, look at every foldable phone, there's always problems with them, right? They say, no, Apple's going to steer clear. Um, part of the reason, too, the highest end iPhone, it's already really expensive. And so to not totally. cannibalize all their regular iPhone purchasers, they'd have to make it even more expensive, like 2500 bucks. Oh, man. And who's going to buy a twenty? Would you pay that? Would no. You pay Absolutely for not. Phone? I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. That's yeah. ridiculous. So yes. To be clear, this is just what this one firm says. There are still rumors that Apple will come out with folding iPhone. Um, iPhone flip is kind of what the rumor calls it. And the rumor is it would have a bigger screen than any of the foldable phones out now. And that the outside would have e-ink. Like if you've ever used a Kindle, how it's that. Oh. Yeah, it's not super bright just to preserve the battery. We'll see about that and the folding iPad. For now, though, there is a new iPad. Just came out. They're actually pretty cool. They come in four colors. Um, there's yellow and pink, which are really cute. I like Yay. this. Yeah. Uh, it's got a 10.9 liquid retina screen, which basically means really good, really mm. good screen. Um, exactly. <laughs> it's got Apple's A14 Bionic chip. That translates to 20% better performance oh. than the series before. So these things but, are but actually... Ellie, Ellie, just first, just first, I just want to stop it for just... Yeah. Think about this. You're in a marketing meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and you have all these new chips, okay? What should we call it, okay? Well, let's call it Bionic. I mean, bionic. because yeah. and it must be really good. <laughs> like, I'm not going to call it Moronic, right? No, it's the Bionic chip. You know, it almost seems like the name they'd give it if they were brainstorming in like the 60s about what the future is going to be like. Right. The yes, A14 exactly. Bionic chip to power our <laughs> iPhones. Uh, it's got a USB-C uh, port too, or USB-C, which is nice. Now, while we're talking about stuff you can buy, the new Kindles, 
Tim, I know you talked about these on the show, but it's worth mentioning. So from early reviews, there's a new $100 model that is basically, oh. if you want just the basics, it looks like it's the best Kindle yet. It's really slim. It's really light. Maybe I'll finally upgrade. Mine is kind of holding a charge, <laughs> but it's not great. A little bit. A How little. old is your Kindle, do you think? Oh, six. Ten years? Six? Uh, years? Yeah. You know, it might be even older than that. <laughs> it's old. I think it was the first paper white. Oh. Oh, yeah. You're you're up at you're up at eight. I bet it's eight old, or nine. Yeah. 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 But it still works. It still works. Okay. I know. Um if you want to take notes and write on your Kindle though, there's the Kindle Scribe. This thing is actually really cool. It comes with a pen, you can write on it. Uh, it's expensive though, 339 bucks. Mm. And then one more thing, back to the folding. Google is apparently working on a folding phone too. Uh, the Google Pixel Fold. There's not a ton of info out there. Best we got so far might be out in 2023, 20, about 1400 bucks. Yeah. Well, you know, and Apple's also working on the, well, they're, they're calling them mixed reality glasses, yep. not yeah. AR, not VR. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be using iris scans and as your biometrics. So yeah. instead of using facial ID. But I, I think what's really interesting is that when you look at the iris scan, is that with the Galaxy, a whole bunch of hackers, they figured out how to like dupe this thing. Yeah. Is that, yeah, they just, they take a picture of somebody in night vision mode, they put contacts on them, they print it out. <laughs> And they Jeez. hold it up. It's like, and the phone's like, oh, that's you. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> it's like okay. James Bond. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, all this feels like uh, high tech hacking from like, I don't know, a movie from 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> And that's the guy with the, you know, wearing the hoodie and hacking. Yeah, Absolutely. He always, knows, he always knows all the passwords. Always. <laughs> all, all right. Coming up, we have to, we have some tips on how you can mobile search in secret. We have the what the heck headline of the week that I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Allie knows what it is. I don't know what it Allie, is. Is it the funniest thing that you've heard in a long time? You told me that you laughed for 10 minutes. So did I. Maybe more. <laughs> I kept, I, I showed many people. Uh, it's a good one. And everybody laughed. Yes. Everybody, everybody laughed. laughed. Uh, and, and there is, what I'm going to do, well, when we get to the headline, I'll tell you, there's a part of the headline that I'm not going to read. <laughs> I might read it at the end of the podcast, just in case we have kids listening. Also, we're going to talk about what's hot on the internet in Disneyland, and we have a truly funny joke at the end. And this week, it's Matt's turn, so stay right where you are. Hey, welcome to Tech Refresh, it's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital. And just a quick reminder, if you have not already gotten our free guide, oh, come on, stop being a loser and go get it already. It's absolutely free. Head over to commando.com slash free guide. Whether you want Windows or Mac, it's there for you. Just give us your email address. You're going to love it. And this is part of the podcast where we like to share some insider secrets and some party tricks. These are things that you're going to want to know and remember and share with your family members and friends because they're going to look at you and go, Dang, you are so smart. And that's what we want you to say. Hey, I listened to Kim Commando today, so you should too. That's an important part. All right, so I'm going to start by answering a question that appears in my inbox at least uh, at least maybe 10 to 12 times a week. Wow. Because wow. I get the same question. It's the same question. And it goes something like this. Hello, Kim Commando. <laughs> I think that somebody is on my phone tracking everything that I do. Yes, because they think that somebody is on their phone and they're capturing all their keystrokes. And so how do you know if somebody actually put a keylogger on your phone? How do you actually know that? So here are some ways. Number one, your phone is suddenly slow okay, when you start doing things. And that's because that keylogger is running in the background. And maybe it also is hot to the touch. Again, because you're not using your phone, but that keylogger program, it's capturing everything and then sending it to everything that you do to who knows who. Maybe you see some strange tech me text messages and you're like, hmm, I didn't send those. I didn't <laughs> see that text message. Or maybe your phone just randomly reboots and you're sitting there and just starts and it's it like shuts down and starts up again. That could mean that somebody has an administrator level password on there and they're just doing all kinds of funky things then you want to check your phone's cell phone records maybe it's like high data usage and suddenly you're getting those alerts that you're going over your limit if you don't have unlimited uh your battery is draining quicker than usual again because it, something could be happening in the background um maybe some apps that you are looking at you're like i don't know where those apps are and why they came from and these they may look like a calculator app but when you type in a certain number suddenly it's like wow look what i found mm. okay, all <laughs> other things uh your phone takes a long time to shut down that's also a sign um maybe when you're on a phone call 
you start hearing like a little bit of weird sounds, maybe like a little crackle. And that could mean that your your phone is actually being recorded. So if you have any of those signs, what you want to do is back up your phone and do a full factory reset because this way it just wipes everything out. Uh, and, you know, speaking of, make sure that you have a good password on your phone, whether it's the passcode. You know, I admit mine is not good. Okay. <laughs> it's not. I will tell you right now that the passcode to my phone is... I'm a little embarrassed because it's the same one that Yi or Khan Yi <laughs> uh, uses is that it's zero zero zero. I know. Oh, I'm Kim. so sorry. <laughs> so sorry. And you know my my email address. I don't know if you if you know that, but my email password was actually hacked recently. It was a bit of a nightmare. I mean, this is now the third time I've had to rename the cat, and this is just not <laughs> acceptable. It's just not acceptable. <laughs> Okay, Matt, you're going to share a story with us now, which neither of us actually know other than it's your weight loss journey. Now, are, why are you losing weight? Because you look fabulous. Hey, well, thank you very much. Um, I think it's more for health reasons. I'm getting uh, up there in age, and I think <laughs> it's about time there. I should probably start uh, keeping track of some of the things that I eat. So some of the things is is I've just kind of gained a little bit of weight during the pandemic and I've struggled to kind of get it back off. I, mm. One of the things I got okay. really into during the pandemic was cooking and not exercising. So <laughs> <laughs> My two favorite hobbies, cooking and not exercising. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and with the new year coming up, a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, well, with their new year's resolution, they're going to try to lose weight January 1st, during January 1st. And I thought, <laughs> you know what? I need to get ahead of these people. So I thought I'd start it now. And so I'm going to do a couple part series. The first thing I'm going to talk about today are calorie counting apps. Those apps that allow you to kind of keep track of the foods you're eating, see what those calories are and what kind of nutrition those foods have in it, and then be able to keep a log of all that information for you. So you don't have to just pull up an Excel spreadsheet or even a handwritten notebook and just write down what you're eating, right? There's a few really good ones. Uh, during the beginning of my kind of research here, I thought, oh, I'm, you know, Weight Watchers. Everybody knows about Weight Watchers. I'll go check that out. And I went and downloaded the app. You can download the app for free, but to get on the program, it's upwards of $25 a month. And I was like, there wow, has you're to be. Kidding. Yeah, I know. $25 That's expensive. a month? Yeah, yeah, right, for a, for a calorie counting app, right? Yeah, no wonder why Oprah has like a couple of Gulf Streams and, yeah. and all this other stuff. So Dang. I thought there had to be at least cheaper options. I knew that there's all going to have in-app purchases and stuff like that, but I thought I can find something cheaper. And, of course, there was. So the very first one that I found <clears throat> was called Calorie Counter My Set Diary. This is a actually free app to start using... <laughs> And it doesn't have any monthly charges, but it does have in-app purchases for certain other things. But it does what all the other apps do. It allows you to scan the barcodes of certain packages of foods that you're eating, and then it'll tell you the calorie intake. It allows you to check the water you're drinking, the steps you're taking, all into its own log. And you can set goals for yourself. So you can say, I want to lose 20 pounds by here. And then it will give you a calorie during each day that you're allowed to eat. Mm. And you can say, oh, I, but I want to eat more on the weekends. And you can upgrade it to higher on that. Now, that app is really, really cool, but there's one that's even better if you have an iPhone. The calorie counting My Set Diary is on both uh, iPhones and Androids, but there is one that just came out with the new iOS update. This one's called Lose It! Exclamation point. So it's Lose It! with an exclamation point at the end. And it does all of those same things, but it's specifically tied into all of your already uh, present Apple devices. So if you have your Apple Watch, if you have your health app set up, it'll import all that information from those apps into this app itself so you don't have to enter all that manually. This one is paid by month or by year, but it's much, much cheaper. I did the <laughs> yearly. It was $40 for the entire year, so a little over $3 a month, so much, much cheaper than $25 a month, but it does all those same things. So like I said before, the coolest thing that I've been doing is going through my entire pantry and scanning all of the barcodes <laughs> with the app to wow. see how many calories and see what the nutritional facts is. One of the things I really like about this one is it will give you alerts. So I'm trying to do the whole intermittent fasting and you can set up a time where you click on the app, you say start my fast, and then you can set up a time where it will alert you a certain amount of time later to when you can start eating again, <laughs> which I think is super helpful because a, a lot of the times you're sitting well, there cheating. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that the I do intermittent fasting. Yeah. And I do 16 hours. Okay. And sometimes like today it was it was a little hard <laughs> because <laughs> I wasn't supposed to eat until 11, but I went 10 miles on my bike and I was starving. Yeah. Right? So, 
it's so it's a little rough. There is an app that if you don't need all the scanning and you just want to be able to type in and log yes. what you eat, and it's absolutely free. It's called My Fitness Pal. Yeah, yes. that's a great one. I was just going to yeah, talk that, about that one. Yeah. Oh, or, oh, okay. Well, there. Go ahead. Tell yeah. us more about that. Absolutely. I, My Fitness Pal is free, and it has all those same features. Doesn't have quite the in depth features that the other two that I listed is. But if you want to not pay for anything, you just want to have something in the background that you can have all the time to keep track of all your calories. My Fitness Pal is great. It does have some in app purchases as well. It says, but all again, all the core features are completely free. My, fit, my fitness pal is nice too because it's just been around for a long time and so many mm -hmm. people use it that basically anything you want to find, somebody has uploaded it before. Sure. You can even find like recipes that mm -hmm. people have uploaded, which is nice. Yeah, and, and one of the good things about all these, all three of these apps that I mentioned have a ton of reviews, have great reviews, and none of them are scams because a lot of the times when you're looking for these oh, calorie yeah. counter or weight yeah. loss apps, a lot of them are scam apps, so be careful when you're looking for these. Yeah. Okay, so before we go to you, Allie, I, just, I have a dieting joke. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. okay, you ready? This is a good one. Okay, Bob and his wife started date started dieting a week ago, and his wife proposed that they should have one cheat day, and that cheat day should be today. So she brought home a McDonald's Big Mac, KFC chicken wings, and Bob brought home his personal assistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Okay. All right. So, Allie, mobile searches that are kind of embarrassing. I'm just going to say it. We all search for stuff sometimes that's, yeah. that we wouldn't want other people to see. Kim, I think you mentioned that uh, that study. It was something like 77% of people would rather not use their phone for a year than have their searches made public. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's yeah, awful. right? And sometimes it's things that you just don't want in your Google history, maybe. You know, seeing reminders of them all the time, getting... I don't know, ads. targeted ads yeah. for right. a rash cream. Like, you just don't want to deal with that stuff, right? <laughs> <A> rash cream. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really don't want to leave behind that trail, you know, in your autofill suggestions, you can use incognito mode. It works, yes. But it's another step, right? You have to open up your phone's browser. And we're purely talking about phones today. You have to open up your phone's browser, click the little thing, open the incognito. That's a pain. So here's my tip. Have two browsers on your phone. One that you use for your everyday non-embarrassing searches, and then a privacy browser that you use for the things that you don't want everybody to see. Uh, the really nice thing about the privacy first browsers is when you close the app, everything is automatically deleted, all your search history, all of your uh, browsing history, so you don't have to remember to do it. And it's kind of incognito by default. You don't have to go through and open up another type. Uh, there are lots of these different apps out there. We like Start Page, um, but it's just an easy thing to do. You don't have to remember, let me close that tab. Let me open up incognito. You just have your, your quarantined off browser. So that's what I do. Give it a try. Um, and then you'll have less weird stuff in your Google history. Yeah, smart. <laughs> yeah, because you know, you because I, I do look up things for other people oh sure it's for a friend it's sure, always sure, sure, for sure. a friend it's just it's just for a friend i mean it's just that, that's all that's all it is and <laughs> then i mean you know how do i tell google that was just like my friend that there should be like, a little button that says like asking for a for, friend what asking for a friend they should have that they yes. should there you go it's called incognito <laughs> <laughs> There, there, there is that. Hey, listen, if you like these quick tips, make sure that you get our Daily Tech Update podcast. Every single day you get two tips. One is actually news and the other one's the tip. And so just search for a commando, my last name with a K, of course, and then you'll want to find the Daily Tech Update podcast. All right, coming up, we have the What the Heck Story of the Week. We have some insider secrets to having the best time at a Disney park. We're going to also have our buying guide. This is brand new to Tech Refresh, and this week we're going to be focused on earbuds and which ones are the best. And, of course, you have all of us that you don't want to miss, so stay right where you are. Welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital that we deliver to you every single Friday with the Kim Commando Tape podcast. And here's the deal. If you're not already getting our newsletters, come on already, okay? And just go over to commando.com slash newsletters and select the newsletters that you want to be really tech savvy about. So whether it's Windows, Android, Apple, your small business, whatever it may be, just head to commando.com slash newsletters. We're not going to sell or or lease or give anybody your email address ever, ever. That's our bottom line to you. So go to commando.com slash newsletters to sign up. All right, so it's my turn this week for the what the heck headline of the week. And it's this is absolutely real. And I saw the headline and I couldn't 
wait to read the story. And then when I read the story, I was laughing so hard that Barry came into my office and he said, what are you laughing about? And he saw it on my screen. He busted up. <laughs> then I sent it to my BFF, Joe, and she started laughing. <laughs> okay. And then I sent it to... <laughs> Everyone you know. Really well-respected woman who I wasn't sure she would laugh. And then she wrote me back and said, that is the funniest crap I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. So <clears throat> here's the headline, and then I will tell you more about ha what happens. Okay, The headline is this. Naked woman chases Jehovah's Witnesses off of her porch and down the street yelling, <laughs> come to my devil Mm, magic. <laughs> <laughs> mm, <laughs> um, magic. Okay, here's the story. Uh, her name's Brandy Williams. She was actually taken to Ventura County Jail after this altercation involving two Jehovah's Witnesses. And who hasn't had Jehovah's Witnesses come to their door, sure. right? I mean, they're normally very nice people. Uh, then she was seen running naked after two young men on bicycles who were going door-to-door -to, -door to spread the message of Christ in their neighborhoods. Uh, the deputy sheriff is quoted as saying, <clears throat> Miss Williams thought it would be funny to answer the door naked and shocked these young men. The two men were sat stunned on her porch for a <laughs> moment before returning to their bicycles. They are very familiar with folks being rude. But what Miss Williams did next went a little too far. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little. Do you think? <laughs> Do you think? Okay. The men... The two men, their names, of course, were Luke and John. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, they said that it, they were quite shocked. And they figured that their message was not going to be heard at this house. And that's why they moved on to the next one. Okay. When they returned to their bikes, Brandy wasn't done trying to get under their skin. She started speaking of her and the magic that it contained. <laughs> This got the attention of Luke and John. <laughs> and they, they said that they began to fear what would happen next, and they pedaled away. <laughs> Go run. <laughs> uh, Brandy took off after them, but she didn't make it too far. Uh, she was apprehended without incident. And after having their statements taken, the men were free to go spread the word of God. <laughs> uh, Brandy uh, said, succumb. To my devil <laughs> uh, magic. You can say whatever that might be. It starts with a V if you want to <laughs> try to figure it out. So, <laughs> so uh, last night I couldn't help. I was making dinner. I looked at Barry and I said, Succumb to. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a better pickup line, honestly. No, yeah. that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, bottom line, don't try this at home. Okay. <laughs> Darn. Which part? Of things, yeah. you know, none of the above. Okay. okay. Good. None of the above. <laughs> uh, this is something that you just, um, <clears throat> it happened in Ventura County. In case you want to read the entire story, I'm sure you can. What was the line again? <laughs> Devil <laughs> magic. Yeah. Devil magic. Don't succumb to it. <laughs> Devil magic. <clears throat> All right, Matt. So now you need to go from that. Now we're going to go to family friendly Disneyland. <laughs> All right. From that story. Bring the kids Disneyland. back in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, this week I, I'm talking a lot about personal experience. I've had a week that has been filled with tech and using tech to help me out in certain things. So recently I traveled with my family to Disneyland in California. And when we got there, I was shocked at what kind of tech goes into just experiencing Disneyland nowadays. It's no longer the days of paper tickets and big foldable maps and, <laughs> you know, getting tickets for the, the fast pass tickets at the little booth and all that stuff. It's not that anymore. Everything is on your phone. Everything. So when we got there, my sister transferred her tickets to our phones, tickets that she had purchased for us and we had just paid her back for them. She transferred all the tickets to our phones manually and they were boom, 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 showed up all on our phones. Then we walk up to the front and they scan the ticket and you walk in. It's no longer the paper tickets and you having to hold on to that paper ticket. It's all in the Disneyland app on your phone. I thought nice. that was crazy. Yeah. And so then I started to realize this is everything now. <laughs> so after that, you have to get Genie Plus 
which if you don't know what Genie Plus is, it allows you to get lightning lane passes, which gets you to the front of the line. It allows you to buy Mm -hmm. food in advance. It allows you to plan your day out in advance and have everything tracked of what you're doing, which is Disney, so it's a little sketchy, but still, they're going to track you either way. But everything in it was digital. And one of the craziest things was I had no idea. And one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting was watching my parents who are not super old, but definitely were taken aback from the (laughs) fact that if someone older that doesn't know how to use technology tried to go to Disneyland and do all the things, you really can't. It's virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. I I thought that story we were talking about, like how you can order food instead of standing in that line. Right. So so you just order it on the app and then you go up, you, you skim the QR code and then they give you your food. Is that how it happens? Exactly. Everything is on a time scale. So if you want to get on a, on a ride, say you're trying to get on Splash Mountain, right? But there's a line and you walk up to the thing and it says, it, oh, it's a 110 minute wait. Well, what you can do is you can go into the app, you can find Splash Mountain, you click on it, it has a little lightning lane symbol. You click on that and then it'll give you a time to show up. So it'll say, hey, come back between 11.45 and 12.45 and you can use your lightning lane pass and go right in. Same thing with the food. If you want to order a bread bowl, you can type in the restaurant that you want to get the bread bowl from. It'll give you a time. It'll say, come back between 11.45 and 12.45, and we'll have your food ready for you. And so once you get there, you click a little button that says, I'm, I've arrived, prepare my food, and they prepare it right then. So it's not just like sitting in the window for you for an right. hour. <laughs> you say, I'm here, prepare it, and then they come out and bring it out to you, and it takes two, three minutes. Wow. Yeah. And you can That's do the same. pretty awesome. You can buy stuff, right? Oh, Yeah. So you go into the stores and you can, if there's a huge long line at the cashier, then you can just pick up the item, find the store on the app that you're in, scan the barcode on it, and then purchase it using your phone and walk out. It's that easy. The coolest thing I thought was there's photographers all over the place taking pictures of people in front of the castle or in front of the Mickey and uh, Walt statue. And they take your picture and then you hand them your phone. They scan your little identification code and then those photos show up on the app. Oh, that's neat. So you neat. have all those phones. Oh, and it's, that part's nice. free, which I thought was amazing. Yeah. So we have all that those is. beautiful that's... professional photos taken by all these people just automatically on your phone. Boy, and all you, you had you to do what? was give them all of your uh, location yeah. data. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. But you know what? To not stand in line at Disneyland, that's amazing. Could be worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really something. You know, I don't know if you saw that TikTok challenge that was going around, or maybe it was just not even a challenge, just a like a an info type of thing, that there are women who are tired of paying that fee in order to get their kids into Disneyland. Because okay. if the kids were over two, it's like... When is $150 or some crazy number like that? Oh, yeah. So what they're doing is they're making the kids, even like four or five, get into the stroller and then they pull the blanket up to oh. them. So as they go through the ticket counter and then as soon as they get to get through the whole pay, then they're into like the main street. The kid jumps out of the oh. <laughs> jumps out of the stroller and they're like, yes, this is how we don't have to pay for our kids to get into Disneyland. I was like, that's well, cool. I don't know if that's really like teaching the kids, <laughs> sure. you know, One of good the cr- morals and values. Yeah. One of the crazier things I saw was on the app, you can, you know how in Disneyland they have places for people to park their strollers mm. and sometimes they get filled up throughout the day. So you can check and see how busy the stroller parkings are at the certain places <laughs> to find out how busy that area is, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> Well, you know, you have that. I still have. I have the same thing on my Tesla. Mm. Is that before I go to a charging station, like the one there mm. in the Biltmore on Twenty Fourth Street in Kalmbach and Phoenix, is that there's sixteen stalls, and it will say only three are available, mm. only four. Available. And I learned this the hard way. Just wanted to pass this along, is that I thought, hey, you know, like I'm like I'm not on the. I have like I don't know, probably fifty miles left on the Tesla. So I said to Barry, let's go down and go to the Capitol Grill for some sushi at the bar, you know, for dinner. So pull in set up that charger. We go have dinner, having a great time. And then my charge was done in 50 minutes. And then I think we were there for about an hour and 20 minutes having dinner. They charge you a dollar a minute. <gasps> what? Oh, no. <laughs> That's some really expensive parking. Yeah, it is. Exactly. I'm like, this is not so Elon, just <sighs> saying. But I understand the principle so somebody just doesn't occupy the stall like I was going to yeah. do and just rude yeah. and just, you know, have dinner. Um, <laughs> 
Anyway, here's the deal. If you're not already following us on social media, especially Instagram, stop ghosting me. I posted a lot of my vacation photos. I was over in Hawaii with my sister this past week, and we did a whole bunch of hiking, and we sat on the beach and had some fun, went out on the boat and good things like that, and went uh, scuba and snorkeling. That I posted those, and so you can go over to Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. Um, also, hiked Diamond Head for the first time Ooh. in all these years I've gone to Hawaii. It's the first time. Wow. How was I- it? Um, it was fairly crowded, and yeah. you do need to make a reservation. Oh, if really? If you ever go over there. Yeah. Um, is that you have to go to the Hawaii State website, and mm-hmm. you can only go between these times because it was just getting super packed. So, Which is kind of interesting that you have to make a reservation or to hike. You know, type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, so on social media, that's Instagram.com slash Kim Commando, Twitter.com slash Kim Commando, Facebook.com slash... Kim Commando, yes. <laughs> and so where we are, make sure that you uh, follow us. All right, coming up, we have uh, Allie. You're going to be telling us about how to buy the best earbuds, right? Yes, indeed. And then at the end, Matt, you are in charge of the joke. Mm-hmm. Is it better mm-hmm. than my dieting joke? Oof. I don't know about that. I chose, we've all been doing these long jokes lately. I found some really good shorter jokes. I'm going to do Ooh. multiple jokes. Oh, yeah. okay, you're going to be tricking us. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to miss that, so stay right where you are. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast. We put this out every single Friday with Kim Commando today. And wherever you get your podcast, make sure that you rate us and you give us a nice review. And I'm going to challenge you to tell at least just at least five people about our podcast. Just all. Not not 10, not 20. I mean, we're going to make it really sad. Okay. Tell two people. That's all. Two people about the podcast. And if you really are a fan, here's the deal. If you can make a sign that says, listen to the Kim Commando <laughs> podcast, search for Commando, just make a sign, stand on any street corner for at least one hour and <laughs> send us the video I'm going to send you a, an official Kim Commando swag bag that's full of all hey. kinds of great things. I mean, even a signed photo. And if you're in Phoenix or California, you're spinning that sign, just let me know. I might even just stop by. Ooh. So that's the way we take Ooh. a photo. So that would be like the ultimate thing. So if you don't want to stand outside and spin a sign, I get that. Just tell two of your favorite <laughs> family members or friends to listen to the Commando podcast. Just search for Commando wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we have uh, we read every single email that comes into us, and we got this email, Allie, about earbuds, right? Yes, Rudy emailed us and said, can you tell me where and what wireless earbuds I should buy? Thank you. I love your show. We get a lot of questions about what should I buy because there's so right. much stuff out there, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to spend your hard-earned money on something and get something that's not very good. So I wish I had a little more info here because, Rudy, it kind of depends on what phone you have. If you have an iPhone... I'm going to say just go with AirPods. That is the thing that Apple does best. They make things that work flawlessly together. So if you have an iPhone, get the headphones that are meant to go with it. If you can afford it, the Pro model is worth it for the fit, for the noise canceling. Um, The second generation Pros, though, they're expensive, $240, although I've seen them go on sale, you know, pretty low. Uh, The non-Pro version, those are actually $160 normally, but I just saw them on sale for $90, so you can definitely get them under $100. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's iPhone. If you have an Android, it's not quite as clear cut. It's not just a one-to-one. If you have a Samsung phone, the Samsung Galaxy Buds, they're the natural pair. They have really great reviews. They're solid headphones. Uh, The Galaxy Buds 2, they're only about 75 bucks. So not that bad for high-end headphones. If you want really great sound, Sony's wireless headphones are kind of the creme de la creme. Um, I have Sony's over the ear and they're the best headphones I've ever had. So it gives me a lot of faith that the wireless earbuds are good too. The downside, of course, is the price. They're about $280 full price. They do go on sale, but yeah, you're going to want to wait for, you know, Prime Day, Black Friday sales, something like that. Uh, Over on commando.com though, we have a full buying guide really at all price points of the best wireless earbuds. So go check that out. We break it down by type of phone um, and we'll give you options from those lower end cheap ones all the way up to the nice guys. So what do they search for? Just buying guide earbuds? Is that yeah. it? That'd That'll get you luck? there. Yep. Okay. And so, and somebody actually sent me an email the other day, Ellie, I know. Um, I can't find the damn search <laughs> area on your way. <laughs> Look for so the magnifying where is that glass. Da- where is that damn search site, Allie? <laughs> that would be in the damn upper right-hand corner. There's a little box. Uh, it's got it a magnifying glass. It says search, I oh, believe. Oh. You click there, 
you type in whatever you're looking for. My little pro tip, um, when you search, you'll get, you can sort it in different ways. Um, you can switch it from relevant to date, and then you're going to get the most up-to-date content. Not always, you know, try both, uh, but that's a little tip if you can't find what you're looking for. Okay, and that's where the damn search box is. Yes, Just is. wanted to let you know. It's <laughs> it. uh, you know, my brother-in-law, Bill, told me when we were hiking in Hawaii this past week that he used to have the same wireless earbuds as I was wearing until his dog ate them. And I was like, wow, Bill, what happened? He says, yeah, the dog ate him, and now he has blue teeth. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Matt, your jokes have to be better than that, so get, lay so. them on us. All right. Okay. I'm going to go in order of my my least favorite to my most favorite. I like all of these, but <laughs> I, I'm going to go from worst to best in this order. Okay. 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 What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. <laughs> 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 good, good. What do you call a that can opener that doesn't work? A can't opener. <laughs> oh. Did you guys hear about the guy who invented the knock-knock joke? He won the Nobel Prize. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. These are premium dad jokes. All right. And then this yeah, is my favorite. They are. There are three types of people in the world. Those who can count and those who can't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, it took us a while to figure that one out. Yeah, that, uh, that was the smart dad joke. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, was, that was heavy math for yeah. all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, so this is at the end of the podcast, uh, along with making everybody smile. We like to give them a little bit of a to-do list. And how about you go first, Al? A privacy browser. Get a second browser on your phone. Trust me, it's easier to keep the things you don't want in all of your you know, regular Googling in one place rather than trying to switch back and forth all the time. And how about you, Matt? You know, I know that with the new year coming up, just if you want to start losing weight right now, do it now. Try out these apps. They're super helpful. And if you want to join me on this weight loss journey, let me know over at podcast.commando.com and maybe we'll make this a longer series. Oh, fun. Yeah. That is something. So how much weight do you want to lose, Matt? About 20 pounds. Oh, that's significant. You're yep. going to be You're svelte. Gonna... I know. Man. I'm hoping. Yes. I'm hoping. Okay. I'll tell you, I, I don't know if you guys have seen Ian lately, but Ian is 6'2". Yeah. Uh, which, you know, people say, like, where did he get his height? I'm like, oh, from his father, of course. <laughs> Barry's like 5'6". <laughs> they look at me like, what? Like, I, it was a joke. Okay. Um, he's 6'2", and he, he weighs himself every day, and he's 150 pounds. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I mean, he's like, his he's waist a is... Oh, he is a beanpole, but, you know, but that's, you know, when you're a young He's guy young. like that. Sure, yeah. You know, I mean, as I told him, I said, you know, I used to be a size zero. That was a long time ago, too. Okay, <laughs> but it happens. Uh, I guess my to-do is uh, thanks for all your support. And I just want to say that we really appreciate everything that you guys and gals send us, all your feedback. And the opportunity that you give us to allow us to come into your lives once a week here on Tech Refresh and every single day at commando.com and also at uh, the podcast Kim Commando today. And on that note, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. And as always, we welcome your comments and even like, ah, where's the damn search bar <laughs> over at podcast at commando.com. That's our email address. That's podcast at commando.com. And we'll see you again here next week. <laughs>